Hey, just because my beer koozie's pink and we're crafting using Mod Podge today, make no mistake, we're doing a man cave project right now. So we're doing two different projects today, and one I like to call old school and new school. So old school, we're gonna use old school magazines. I got some old school coasters to upcycle. And we're gonna apply the decoupage the old school way. And then we're gonna do the new school. So new school, I got some brand new wood, uh, wood discs are little uh, cork. And they got little stickers on them, so those will stick under here. So we got a brand new coaster. And then we're also got brand new magazines that we're gonna pull our clips out to apply to the brand new coasters, decoupage it the new school way. And that I'll show you when I get to this project. But we're gonna start with the old one. it down to cars in here that I've narrowed it down that I really think would be great on the coasters but I want to take a moment and show you these coasters I, I like to take old stuff and then upcycle it and I picked these these are old old um, hardboard coasters you can tell how old they are because they got like they deteriorated a little bit basically when you look at them you can see they're like close-ups of of a of a portrait or a painting and like different segments of the painting. Remember that um, because that's basically what I'm going to do when I pull the, pull it out of the pictures. Um, and then these being all vintage and kind of worn, they got this cool gold patinaed edge on the edge of these. And I believe, I don't know if you can see it here. I'm going to have to like peel off. This isn't like, I don't think it was a glue. It looks almost like a laminate that, that kind of protected these. We're not going to use a laminate. We're using the Mod Podge. But let's get to the pictures. I was debating on, I, I like one car in this one. What was it? This one right here. No, not that one. This one, the little stinker. So I, I dig this old hot rod. It's got bright colors. I think it'll be really cool. The green and the red, got the 44 dash in there. And, and I, I have a 44 myself. It's my dream car. I love it. So that kind of like that. It's got this cool shift knob here. So my thought is if I take the, the uh, coaster, and like I could do this, or if I want the back of the car or like the side of the car with the wheel, I can take that portion of it. This is too small of a pick. So that one's not, I can't use that one. Um, you could definitely use this one. This being on the staple, it doesn't really give me an opportunity to use the front, so could use the, this part of this one, but not quite big enough. So maybe that one won't work. Then my other choice that I liked was this uh, 44 truck in here. So the Faultless 41, I, I, I'm a sucker for gold, uh, gold, cars with white interior. I used to have a Volkswagen. I, that's what, how I did it. I made like this bronzy patina outside and I did the upholstery of white. So I really like the gold. And plus it'll match the gold, kind of bring the gold out on the edge. I think that picture will work. I can grab one of the front. That's two. Oh, look, we could even do like the upholstery. 
that might be big enough to get the back corner. Definitely can do here and here. This is the one way. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I get the tailgate. All right. So this is the one we're going to go with. Remember, it is an old school truck, old school coasters, and we're going to decoupage it the old school way. We'll get this one going and then we'll get on to the new one. All right, so this seemed like it was gonna be a pretty easy project. Just peel that plastic off. And then I started to scrape, you know, this is just paper, but it is glued down. So you can see right here, I actually cut the, the backer board, but I think I got a better idea, but I've definitely got to get this paper off because I don't want to glue onto the smooth surface. I don't think it'll stick. So here's my new idea. Using water, I think what I can do is put the water right on the, the paper. And I, and I use this process for something else, like when I do like photo transfers and stuff, but I think it'll work with this process. So just put the water on and just rub with your fingers and eventually it's gonna soak in and all that paper pulp will start coming off. Okay, so yeah, that was easy breezy, man. That took, what, maybe five minutes. I got a nice clean board here. I think uh, everything's looking pretty good. The back got a little bit wet, but not, not that big of a deal. So I've got four more here. I got to do the same thing too. So let's get to it. All right, next step, moving on. So now we got to actually cut our clips out and there's a lot of things to consider here we know we're going to use the 44 so that's that was already <laughs> taken care of but the first step is to cut out your pages and you know i'm trying to get as close to the seam as possible the one thing that we're doing is when we glue these onto the coasters we got to go edge to edge so you'll see me here looking at the pictures making sure i can center it in i can actually go edge to edge and then also you have your composition that you got to look for as well and then you also got to look at the back side of the pages right so you may like this picture on one side but what about the back side because if you can't do both so i've got my measurements done i know which ones i'm going after i'm going after the engine first this one is very close to the edge but it's like the perfect size so i think it'll fit but i won't know until i actually cover it it's like really 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 going to be close so i cut that one out first because that's the one i wanted and there was no consequences on the back side the back side had this side profile of the bed and i really liked the the big white wall tire with the chrome steel wheel so that was an easy no-brainer and then now i'm looking at the front right wheel so i thought that would be a good one to capture and there's also enough room to capture that tailgate on the back side. So this was a perfect two-sider one that I, that I was able to kind of cut through. You'll see I kind of cut a little closer to the edge here. That way I had enough room for the tailgate. Okay, so this photo here was just right. It's the front of the car. Uh, love the front of a 40 Ford. I, I like the deluxe and the standard. I like the standard when it has a solid chrome grill. That's what my car has. Let me know what you guys like. But anyhow, I like the front so much, I actually gonna go ahead and cut two front ends. One's kind of just a different perspective. One's gonna be a little bit closer than the other one from the left, from the right. You'll see it at the end when I do the reveal here, but having two, two coasters of the front end, not a big deal. And then I was sorry to say that the, the engine one did not fit. It was just a tiny bit too small. So it's a good thing we picked out the 40 Ford article i guess or the spread because there was so many pictures there was one big enough for me to kind of go in and cut it's the front right wheel kind of angled from the back it's actually a really cool shot so once this one's complete all we got to do is pull all five of them and we'll cut them a little bit closer to the coaster size so you can see here i got five of them they're getting ready to go i'm shaking up my mod podge 
Whoa, those look really, really good. Um, okay, so I got all five of them done. Now it's time to apply the Mod Podge. So here's a quick tip. I just kept some of the magazine scraps to pour my Mod Podge on rather than getting like a bowl or anything. Don't want to over, over pour it. So anyhow, go, getting going. So you need enough Mod Podge to soak into the magazine and every magazine is a little bit different. Some are thicker than others. So it's kind of tricky to get just the right amount, but you want it to not get too saturated in a magazine where it's going to cause excessive wrinkles, but you want enough to penetrate the magazine to where it's got full adhesive capability or whatever you want to call it. Anyhow, on this first one here, I, I put a substantial amount of Mod Podge, you saw it, and then I'm going to squeeze out the rest. And truth be told, this was just a little bit too much. Um, and you'll notice that because this one coaster has a little more wrinkles than the other one. But the trick is to get as much out as you can and you saw I rolled it, and I'm gonna go ahead and roll real hard around the edges to kind of create a crease, and we'll deal with that in a moment and show you how to cut that off nice and easily. The next one, I decided to be a little bit more conservative on the Mod Podge. I had a few wrinkles on the first ones, and I'll show you that in a minute. It's not that big of a deal because we're doing it the old school way, and doing it this way, you are gonna have wrinkles regardless, but, we want to kind of minimize it as much as we can. So I put a little bit less Mod Podge on there and everything else is the same. We push the excess Mod Podge out from the middle to the edge and then we'll get the roller here and push it out, pushing really hard again, creating creases on the edge of the coaster. So when we do our cutting or trimming, it'll come out nice and clean. So now we just got the remaining three and then we'll move on to cutting the edge. Okay, now I've let these completely dry and it's time to trim the edge. And I'm not gonna use scissors, I'm using sandpaper. And it's basically the same way you would take the grip tape off of a, of a skateboard. Uh, this I believe is like a 180 grit, 200 grit. It doesn't really matter as long as it's not too coarse. And it, you just wanna make sure that you're pushing away from the, from the edge and not coming back towards the edge. Oh yeah, and like I said, it has to be dry. All right, so it's been a minute and the Mod Podge is completely dry and we're ready to move on to the top coat. Again, I'm just gonna go ahead and use the same paper to pour my Mod Podge on and we're gonna come with a new brush, a bristle brush, and come over the top. Here you can kind of see the wrinkles I was mentioning earlier. I mean, and you're gonna have wrinkles in old school, but you wanna minimize them. And here you can see the difference between too much glue and not enough glue. So same process i'm going from the middle out and i'm doing light coats of mod podge especially on the first one because if that soaks in and gets saturated from the top down again it will reactivate that glue underneath and the wrinkles will start coming back so just be conservative here and do multiple coats from the center out and then with the old school what i like to do is do like a cross hatch you see me turn it one way, I'll let it dry a little bit, and then for another coat, I'll go the other way. And you'll see the effect that it gives in the end. But yeah, old school way looks really, really cool. All right, all done. I wanna show you this up close here. That's the, like the crosshatch technique. It, it gives it that whole vintage vibe. You know, these turned out super cool. I'm gonna show them all to you here in a moment, but, but just look at how cool these are with the vintage the patina on the edge, the texture on the front, way better than the fruit we started with. They're old school, they're gonna work perfect in my garage. And we'll move on to the new school ones. But before I do, let me show you the highlight reel early on these things. I think you're gonna dig it, and then we'll move on to part two.
All right, moving on. New school, new magazines. I have already went through and picked the, uh, the truck I'm going to use and cut out the pages. Didn't need to go over that again, but this is what we're doing. I like it. It's got some bright colors. Um, pretty, it's a C10. I got a good front wheel image there. You know, I'm a big C10 guy, so I thought this would be a good one to kind of to work the new school version on. You know, I'm pointing out all the different sections that I'm going to use, similar to what I did on the other one, but I'm not going to demonstrate how I cut and placed each one. So hopefully you got an idea there. But here, I didn't shake up the Mod Podge. I went ahead and I'm going to stir it because the last one, it did have a few bubbles in it. And it, the key to new school is, I mean, we're trying to keep it like no wrinkles at all, like really, really crisp. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the magazine card to kind of hold the Mod Podge, but there's no bubbles in that Mod Podge. And then we're just gonna go ahead and put on a pretty good coat, not too much, but kind of the same thing, nice and even across. But this time we're gonna just do all of them at the same time. and then we're gonna let it all dry. All right, so this might not have been what you were thinking when it comes to new school. Ironing's not new school, but it is a lot newer process than the old way we used to do it, where you brush that stuff on, kind of like I did the other coasters. So new school way, we got the new magazines. The glue has dried on these. Um, it's been, this is actually the next day. So the glue is dried. Now we're gonna go ahead and take these magazine clippings, put them on here and heat them from the top to reactivate that glue. And that should make them nice and smooth with no wrinkles. And here's the secret, it's parchment paper. You know, you can't burn the magazine, so by putting the parchment paper on on top of the magazine clipping, it'll keep the, the magazine from getting scorched. And then the one thing that I kind of can tell you is, you know, well, on this first one, you're gonna see I kind of messed up because I heated it up and you can see I pushed too hard and it, it kind of slid a little bit. So I was like, oh man, um, I think I could have heated it up and pushed it back, but I just threw that one away. I started over and this time I was a little bit more careful as I was moving the iron, you know, it's just kind of holding it steady, but not like pushing too hard to where it might have grabbed that magazine and slid it off the edge. But once I figured that out, we were off to the races. So just take your time get them nice and hot and make sure you go all the way to the edge. I'm double checking everything here, making sure my edges are down, but this is easy breezy. Now just look here. I mean, I got it on an angle here so you can see just how flat and crisp this process is. New school's the way to go, man. New school's the way to go. Right, so now we got to do the top coat and what you see me doing here is just using a soft brush to make sure that there's no dust uh, or any particles. I let it dry overnight and uh, it had a little bit of dust on it. So we're going to use lacquer here. It's, it's uh, aerosol lacquer. Now you could brush on a top coat or whatever, but we are going for a super crisp finish and I'm going to use like coats of lacquer. So back in the day when you're painting hot rods and whatnot, you know, they would be Oh, it's got 10 coats of hand rub lacquer in between each coat we rubbed it. So I just thought I'd do a lot of deep coats of spray lacquer. And then what I'm doing is I'm doing each coat, I'm turning it so I can get the side really good. So like one coat, I'm doing it this way and I'm making sure I get the side. Like I said before, we don't need that 
moisture from your beer koozie or whatever getting underneath there. And then after I did the one, I just did the other four in like an assembly line type, but went pretty smooth. All right, it's the next day. And let me clarify something. I let it dry 30 minutes before each coat. And uh, this is what we ended up with. Look at that. I'm telling you, this is better than I thought it could have turned out. Um, and it's pretty durable. They got like eight coats. I turned it four different times on there. So I'm pretty sure they're going to be pretty durable. But I'm super happy how crisp this came out. I tell you, New School is probably the way to do it, man. It turned out really cool. So anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and put the bottoms on these things. If you recall, the, the old school ones had the tattered felt. These are cork cork uh, peel adhesive bottoms that you can just buy all ready to go. So I did learn something on how to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and kind of have you watch the process. You know, trying to get it right in the center was kind of tough. There's like a tiny reveal around all the edges. So this is the trick that I learned to make it easier. So doing it and eyeballing it from corner to corner rather than from top to bottom. Once I figured that out, it went real quick. You just peel these things and stick them on and you're ready to go. Now, full disclosure, I know out there there's a uh, heat transfer method where you can have a digital photo, just heat transfer onto a coaster. Um, that's not my style, but I didn't want anybody saying, hey, why don't you just do it that way in the comments? It'd be a lot easier. But you wouldn't get this DIY authentic magazine clipping effect. school we got the new school coasters old school applied to old school way new school applied to new school way which one did you like the best which mod podge process did you like the best i'm not sure i mean this way this new school way does definitely come out a lot nicer cleaner smoother but i'll be honest with you i'm all about the old school old school truck old school hot rod old school coasters but i gotta love my new school stuff as well as far as the Mod Podge process, this process with the new school definitely is easier, smoother. Well, maybe not easier because this way you can get sloppy, but this one to get good results, it's definitely easier to use the iron on method. I don't know, I'm torn. Put in the comments which one you like. Anyhow, thanks for watching the video. If you like this type of content, you may want to watch my next video that's going to pop up on the screen because I'm doing something cool with. Spark plugs, hubcaps, either one. Mm -hmm.